And this morning, I feel fine. So fine, I asked the lady you're looking at to come to dinner to meet my mother. And she said yes. We'll probably both have second thoughts around lunchtime. But right now, I'm feeling pretty good about the whole thing. Hey, maybe if I turned around right now, I'll catch her watching me at the window, and she'll give me a smile, and she'll wave. Jesus, why don't they ever watch where they're going? She's something, that Molly Dodd. The kind of woman that could get a man killed. like trying to get around this city. Unbelievable. Um. Still mighty cute. Boy, if you ever decided to unpack and maybe decorate the place, it'd be terrific. Dennis, why are you here in my apartment? You honestly didn't get the message. What about? I think I found a co-op for your cousin, Mike Sales. He put your name down as a character reference. We could have done this by telephone, but you never returned my messages. I never got your messages. No wonder. I had a machine like this. It's garbage. Fine. I'll just get rid of it. Now, what do you need to know? I need to know why you're so upset to see me. Please, let me finish. Molly, this kind of anger means one thing. You still care. Stop it! You don't need to be walking around under this cloud. I'm not the same man who might have misled you about his marital status. I've changed. I know. I'm really my own worst enemy. Not as long as I'm still around. See? The hostility that masks what's really going on between us. Oh. Ah, the bedroom, tousled, smelling of seduction, just the way I remember it, with the possible exception of these handcuffs. Get out of my bedroom and put down those handcuffs. Strange words coming from you. Ah, oh, Molly, Molly Dodd, greatest regret of my life is that we nipped what we had in the bud when it could have blossomed into a spring bouquet. Don't even think about it. You don't get it, do you? You're waiting for some kind of line about how empty I feel without you. How I'd cut off my best friend's right arm just to have you back. But I'm not going to say any of that. I just want to say that I want you in my life. Somehow. As a friend, as a lover. However it can be. That's up to you. I can be had, but I won't wait forever. Once again, the ball's in your court. Oh, hello. <laughs> Couldn't put it down, eh? I could barely pick it up. I mean, the amount of sheer typing, you know, that has gone into this book, it's, uh, well, it's astounding. I... Are you sure this is really a good time to talk? With you, Miss Dodd, every time we talk is a good time. Good. <laughs> because now I've uh, finally finished it. So, here I am. Uh, first, let me thank you for sharing your work in progress. Oh, my work. The in progress aspect of it is quite over, thank you. Ah, uh, oh, well, of course. Um, well, the whole thing, uh, as a whole, is, uh, it's, uh, to put it all into a single word or phrase is very difficult. Yeah, I know. Uh, that one part, actually that entire section. Oh, that's the part I struggled with. Burnt the midnight oil, looked deep within my soul, sort of my homage to Jimmy Michener. Yeah, but earlier, 
Yeah, of course, but you need that information later on. Think about it. True, true. I, uh, I think... A natural feeling. response, considering the material. Let me say again, I am impressed. You know, all that... <laughs> all <laughs> night after... Lonely night. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, I did think... I was sure you would. Davy, I, I... Do you honestly want to know what I think? It's why I gave it to you to read so many months ago. Well, I get the feeling that you'd rather not know what I really think, which is actually fine. The floor is yours. Um. <clears throat> um, I liked it. I, large parts of it were really good. But? There is so much to like about it. Uh, yeah, I like the real part, you know, with the father and the son when they're living in that gorgeous apartment overlooking the park. And the way the father keeps rescuing the son, you know, it's warm, it's funny, uh, yeah, it's very believable. But where I have trouble is the uh, kind of fantasy nightmare section. I, I mean, all those tunnels under Grand Central Station, all those ghostly people, and that one guy who keeps coming back to live with the ghost even though he has a perfectly normal family. I, I guess it just doesn't ring true. Begging your pardon, but you're dead wrong, Miss Dodd. And I thank you for reading my random jottings. Davy. I must say, you've brightened my day considerably. Oh, come on, I, maybe it was above me, I don't know. It's not that. You've mistook the real for the fantasy, and the fantasy for the real. The nightmare was real? True facts witnessed by these very eyes. Uh, how could you know about hidden tunnels under the tracks? You know, and, and all those sad people. Fact is, I go there on a regular basis. You go there? I go there because my son lives there, Miss Dodd. Your son? It's his longest permanent address since he was a child. Your son actually lives under Grand Central? There was a war in Southeast Asia, Miss Dodd. To this day, I don't think he quite believes that it's over. I'm sorry, David. I, I had no idea. I see him every week. He takes me up to the waiting room. The living room is what they call it. And we'll sit there among the departing passengers, eat a sandwich, have a smoke, not say too much. Then he goes his way, I go mine. That's how it's supposed to be with fathers and sons, isn't it? Huh. Boy, to think after all this time, I, you never said you had a son. I mean, how come you never, ever mentioned him before? Saving it for the book, Miss Dodd. Well, enough of this carefree lark. Time for me to return to my position of responsibility. Can I take you up in the elevator for old time's sake? Well, it would be an honor. It's the very least I can do after all the time you spent reading Volume 1. Volume 1, you say? I've only scratched the surface, Miss Dodd. Stuck my toe in the water of my life's work. Too boring. Too stupid. Too... Too... Nate, what have you got me into? Don't get away! Phil. Phil? Brother James, my man. <laughs> I want you to meet my main squeeze, Molly Dodd. Pleased to meet you. Uh, mm. I just do it the old-fashioned way. Well, the old-fashioned way is good, too. Uh, you sure got yourself one fine, foxy lady. Well, that's me, the ultimate fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'd like to get down with a bit of the bubbly, hmm? Is it that? Oh, uh, how do you mean, damn? I mean that the champagne is fresh. Ah, oh, oh, well, <laughs> so long as it's fresh. I hate stale champagne. So. So how you been keeping yourself, my brother? Hey, you know how it is, brother. Working for the man. <laughs> Be cool. I want you to meet my first.
first lady, Molly Dye. And you, sister, a stretch limo in a city full of yellow cats. Well, thank you. I think. So what's happening, brother? Drinking wine and feeling fine when I ain't working for the man. Uh, now, I hate to network at a party, but do you have a, a number or an address for this man that everybody seems to work for? Because I could really use a job. You know, I really dig you, Molly. But sometimes you can be just so. Hey. I know. I'm sorry. I'll work on it. I'll go to one of those salons. Oh. Um, let's dance. Uh, you know, my hands are kind of full. What you got there, girl? Oh, cheese? I thought it was a potluck. Yeah, James, did you bring the jello mode? Oh, no, brother. I'm in charge of the casserole. Nate, <laughs> uh, I... hey, where's your mother? I'm dying to meet her. Hey, Mom. Molly died here wants to meet you. She even brought you a, a cheese log. Oh. Gee, Mrs. Hawthorne, I'm so pleased to meet you. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, you know, you're just a wonderful singer, vocalistically, I mean. Uh, yeah, and I know that because my husband, uh, my ex-husband, my very ex-husband, um, Although, you know, we do get along very well now that we're not married. Anyway, he used to have, still does have, in fact, a band in front of which I would sometimes sing. You don't say. But does this band look like a band in front of which you could sing right now? Me? Come on, Molly. No, no. Hey, hey, everybody. Listen, uh, uh, I want you to welcome my special lady here, Molly Dodd. She wants to really get down for us. No, see, I'm far too embarrassed to get really down. Um, This is just excellent, Mrs. Hawthorne. What exactly do you call it? We call it roast beef. Yes. Oh, well, it has such an unusual taste. Nate, what is it? Did you... Did you put tarragon in the sauce? I know that you can't eat tarragon, honey. Well, then it's cumin. It's got to be cumin. I know all about you and cumin, baby. I could write a book about you and cumin. I know what it is. Wait. It's it's turmeric, isn't it? Bingo! It's turmeric, isn't it? Since when was turmeric a problem? Just very recent. I I I just broke out one night and I figured it had to be the, the turmeric. Damn. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll be fine. As long as my throat doesn't close up. Oh, I should have known. Let me add turmeric to the list. You poor baby. <sighs> Are you okay? I'm fine. My face is all puffy. No, you're okay. Am I okay? You're fine. You're wonderful. She likes you. Really? All right, here you go, sweetie. I just wonder when you're going to find someone to take care of you the way I do. Well, maybe one of these days I might get lucky. Well, you'd better hurry up because I'm not going to live forever. Relax, Mother. I've got plenty of time. You think you have time, mister? You're 39 years old. One of these mornings you're going to wake up and wonder what happened to your life. You know, you get on great with my mother, Mrs. Hawthorne. Is that right? Well, yes. Uh, she's always worrying about me getting older and all that. Still single. Well, if you're going to share your life with someone, 
It just seems that your chances are better if you both have similar interests. Oh, really? Ah, well, um, I think what your mother means is that, uh, if we had nothing in common, it would be a problem. Like, if you were a doctor and I was, uh, a go-go dancer. Well, no, no, that's not a very good example. Uh, say... I was a forest ranger and you worked for a lumber company, so I was busy protecting the forest while your actual livelihood depended upon just cutting down the trees. That might be the kind of situation that your mother was talking about, or um, you were a carpenter and I was... A... That's exactly what I was talking about. You've got to have something in common. Of course, just being friends is something else again. And I hope that Nate will bring you over to dinner often. I hope so, too, Mrs. Hawthorne. There is peach cobbler for dessert, and we will have to split it because Nate is allergic. Twist my arm. Do you cook? Not peach cobbler. <laughs> Nate is very difficult to cook for. I was wondering if you'd like to go sliding. I brought my own toboggan. It's currently down in your lobby. Uh, I hope it's safe. It's an heirloom. Uh, excuse me, uh, I don't believe this. It's really beautiful in Brooklyn Heights. I was just there. There's a full moon on the crest of the hill. The, the snow is just sparkling. Full moon, well, that would explain it. The conditions are just about perfect. For sliding. That's kind of what I had in mind. You'd better put on warmer clothes. Moss, where have you been? Brooklyn Heights. I just... Before that. Oh. Well, this weekend I was at a book convention in New Jersey. Camden, I think. It's quite a convention town. I didn't mean this weekend. I meant this whole year. You were in Switzerland. Yes. Uh, oh, that's your answer then. Uh, Switzerland. You disappeared. You and I were right in the middle of something which I didn't understand. And then you, you were gone. You weren't there. A postcard said, these are Alps. Beyond that, you just ceased to exist. Uh, I grew a beard. Oh, I wasn't going to say anything about that, but since you brought it up, I, it makes you look a little like Rasputin. I beg to differ, but you're wrong. What, it doesn't make you look like Rasputin? No, I wrote you letters. Many, many letters. Uh, well, more than several, anyway. Uh, in excess of six. Do you know, I am so sick of people telling me that they left me messages which I never received, that they mailed me letters which I never got. I didn't say I mailed you letters. I said I wrote you letters. You wrote me letters that you never mailed. That's correct. Uh, any particular reason you never mailed them? Personally, I found the entire postal system over there too much to deal with. I went into the post office a couple of times, but frankly, it wasn't something I wanted in my life at the time. And yet you continued to write these letters even after this falling out with the post office. Well, I feel that the actual writing of the letter is the, the important part. Uh, any fool can mail them. Are you limping? Maybe a little. Uh, there's a hole in my boot and a piece of ice cut in there. Well, do you want to get it out? Oh, it'll melt soon enough. Could you possibly tell me what you want? I want to go sliding with you. Or maybe just walking. I could pull the toboggan behind me. It wouldn't be a problem. Okay, let me yank out a few more teeth. Why did you come here? Your light was on? <laughs> you mean it's, it's too late? No. <sighs> I don't know whether it's too late or not. Moss, you were gone for a very long time. So, it's a uh, no on the toboggan? I was on my way to bed. It's 
been a very long day, very little of which I've understood. I understand. Did you enjoy your trip? Yes. <laughs> Every day was different. Look, do you think maybe I could bring those letters over sometime? They're all to you, so it would be too bad if you never read them. Mm, why involve the Postal Service at this late date? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. I brought them this far. I surely can take them the rest of the way. Okay. Well, uh, boy, I sure hope that big ring of international toboggan thieves isn't working this neighborhood. Yeah. Oh. I better get going. Uh, maybe we can slide together another time. Good night. Awesome.